What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Look, it is always a great day when Apple drops a keynote with just so much information from WWDC. We had iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, macOS, tvOS, and more. So these are all of my reactions, good and bad apples, and just everything in between. You know that I won't be able to cover every single thing, but you know we're gonna cover a whole lot of it. So first of all, I love the format. It was clean and flashy and sure, you know, it moved a little fast at times, but it just didn't mess around. It got right to the point and it was one of the best keynotes they've done in a while. Plus, Apple was just absolutely like flexing at every chance to show off their five billion dollar campus. Some of those shots looked like it was straight out of a spaceship. But even with all of the reported spoilers and the fact that we saw no new hardware, not a single piece of new hardware, they still surprised us. They left me impressed and you know what? That's a good Apple. Ooh. All right, let's start with the biggest announcement and kind of just work our way through this. Like we expected, Apple announced its move to making its own chips with their own Apple Silicon. They didn't call it ARM or reference ARM chips, even if that's the architecture behind it. That's a very Apple thing. Microsoft and Adobe, they're already on board early. That should make a lot of you happy, including me. But the most impressive thing were the demos, right? Everything they showed us from their demos with Mac OS, Big Sur, because that's the only way you're allowed to say it. They showed off Microsoft Word, a demo with a five gig Photoshop file, and then they really had to just completely show off playing three full res 4K video clips at the same time in Final Cut Pro. That's just bonkers, because this wasn't even a next gen chip that we saw, but the A12Z found in the current iPad Pro. Even more impressive, the only difference between the A12Z and the A12X from the iPad Pro almost two years ago is that they made one more graphics core available. So you're getting that type of performance from an Apple chip that was released close to what, two years ago? I've been saying this for years that we had never really seen these chips used to their full potential. Well, you know what? We just did and we should all be excited because the Apple Silicon future looks ridiculously bright. Now, Apple says that the first Apple Silicon based Mac, it'll be released by the end of this year. And then the full transition to all Apple chips will happen over the next two years. All of Apple's own apps in Mac OS, say it with me, big sir, are already running natively right now and ready for prime time on Apple processors. They've covered all the bases with developer tools for universal apps that will work on both Intel and Apple's chips on day one. Rosetta 2, that'll translate earlier existing apps to run on new Apple hardware, and then virtualization if you wanna run Linux on your Mac. But my thinking is that Apple will release the more consumer geared Macs for general users first. So we're talking about the MacBook, iMac and Mac mini, that'll switch over first, and then we'll see it happen in the entire pro line by the end of the two year transition. And Apple made it clear there are still Intel based machines coming over those next two years. Now Apple's evolution into a chip maker is just impressive. We knew it was gonna happen, but they impressed us even more with their entire demo and all the information they gave. Plus, you know, I wouldn't have been mad for one second if senior VP of hardware technologies, Johnny Sruji, finished off his Apple Silicon presentation by saying, Hail Hydra. I mean, come on, he had that whole Hydra vibe and it was in this underground facility with that blue lighting. In fact, wait, blue lighting? Oh no, you know what? I think that Apple Silicon is based off the Tesseract. I mean, where else would they get technology like this from seemingly out of nowhere? It's just so impressive, right? Hail Apple. Developers will be able to apply for a developer transition kit that includes a Mac mini with an A12Z and these specs, making it likely the first new Apple Silicon based Mac we'll actually see this year. Developers can apply now and kits will start shipping out this week according to Apple. And without a doubt, even if we saw it coming, this surpassed my expectations, the transition, it will not be easy for everyone, but the new Apple chips announcement absolutely deserves a good Apple. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna talk about the announcements that stuck out the most to me and we're gonna just really bounce around this whole keynote. AirPods, okay, they just went up a whole nother level with a software update and the addition of automatic switching that seamlessly switches AirPods between your devices from iPhone to your iPad and then to your Mac when you jump from device to device. And if you get a call from someone special like Brian, your AirPods will switch to that call. Come on, pick up, pick up. I can literally see my call on screen. <sighs> yeah, 
whatever. She must be busy or something. Then AirPods Pro, they're getting a new spatial audio feature that will replicate a surround sound experience with the current hardware. The sound stays fixed in the same place, whether you move your head or you move the device you're watching on, or you're in a car that is turning on a corner on the go. This is just awesome. And it'll work with content encoded in 5.1 and 7.1 surround and even Dolby Atmos. And you all know how much that I love that Dolby Atmos, but I have a friend named Lamb who was a skeptic about it. And I don't expect it to be exactly like a home theater lamb, but if it just sounds better, even a little bit, but it's gonna sound more than better, I am 100% for this. Plus, think about this now, Apple has the AirPods line, the impressive sound of the HomePod, yeah, it has shortcomings, and then the over-the-air headphones that we expect to be coming. And it's kind of been creeping up on us, but Apple is now a major player in the audio space doing things that no one else is with sound quality like theirs. They're, they're again, expanding to another level. Now let's jump over to iOS 14. They didn't change the name to iPhone OS, not like some people thought. They are sticking with iOS. And the biggest thing here that you'll use on a daily are the new widgets. Yes, Android has had them for years. Like I heard all of you mumbling those same exact words at me through the screen. That's right, Alex from San Jose, like I heard you too. But they look super classy, like it's clean on an iPhone. You can make them different sizes, move them around and customize your screen. Game changer? No, but welcome addition that we pretty much gave up on years ago, yes. Now the app library helps with organization. It's nice, yeah, but will I use it all the time? Probably not, we'll see. But how do I explain this feature to someone like my mama who I help her out with her phone? I just don't, I, I wouldn't even tell her about it. But I think it will come handy to some of those, uh, let's call them power users. Now picture in picture is gonna be huge for me, even if it's just taking a FaceTime call and working on my iOS device at the same time. I absolutely love this. Translation, it's about time we see this. I'll be curious to see if I use this more than going directly to Google, which supports many more languages. And then you have all the new features for messages from pinning messages to using threads. And yes, all new memojis, including face covering memojis. Nice improvements, but nothing earth shattering. They definitely won't have this nice little quarantong do that I do. I mean, I see everything you guys and gals have said about it. Don't worry, it's getting cut soon. I mean, my feelings weren't hurt. Using your iPhone like a car key is coming like we talked about before. This won't be a game changer immediately, but it's gonna be big for Apple users over the next few years. Plus, on its launch, it will only work for all of you who plan on buying the new 2021 BMW, a car that everyone is obviously considering as an option if you work at Apple. And in case you were wondering if Apple is still maybe kind of out of touch with the everyday person. They made sure to remind us in the map section of the keynote where they talked about its improvements and have included EV routing to help reduce what they call range anxiety. See, that's where you feel anxious when you don't know where your next car charging station is or if you'll be able to make it to your next destination. It's an anxiety disorder that happens to people who have created one for themselves because they can afford to do it. So. Lots of iOS nuggets here that are being brought to the iPhone and the iPad as well, which obviously sets us up perfectly for iPad OS. And if there was one feature that I'm instantly in love with, it has to be Scribble. The Apple Pencil just got a whole lot better with this software update when it's available. And it almost feels like some of the DNA from the Apple Newton lives in Scribble for iPad OS. I love everything about it. Handwriting can be turned into text. It can recognize shapes or select your text that's been handwritten, and then you can copy and paste that handwriting, and it'll be pasted as cleaned up text in another document, Dizam! Like they absolutely just knocked this one out of the park, so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I'm just gonna warn you, you might wanna take out your headphones for this, just, I'll give you two seconds. Let's get ready to scribble! The whole new sidebar UI makes apps so much more usable for iPadOS, I'll actually use the music app again, I love that. And in iPadOS and iOS, incoming calls no longer takes up the entire freaking screen. It might be one of the things that I cheered for. Sometimes it's the simple things in life. Now I've been a big critic of Apple's HomeKit, but they took the first big step to show me that they actually are gonna take this seriously now when they focused on being part of the alliance with Amazon, Google, Zigbee, and more moving forward. The last time I checked, Apple was only compatible with about a few hundred smart home devices while other platforms, we're talking about the tens of thousands. Like that's how far behind they've been. Otherwise, you know, they wouldn't be joining a group if they were the leader in this field. Now, if Apple can be compatible with my Nest 
and my Logitech Harmony remote in the future, then you know I would gladly give them a chance to be a part of my smart home. We know Siri still needs to get better. This keynote showed some small improvements. You know, it gets better every year little by little, but it still needs to fundamentally get redone from the ground up to just be a smarter assistant. Right now it is good enough and Apple's privacy stance kind of holds it back some, but its privacy stance is also one that I appreciate. So it's always gonna be this kind of give and take, but they are moving in the right direction. All right, let's talk watchOS, one of my favorite Apple devices all time. Sleep tracking is finally here and it looks really good. The watch face changes when you sleep. It measures your sleep quality by sensing your motion and the micro movements from the rise and fall of your breath. The biggest issue is if I don't charge it overnight right now, my Apple Watch dies within the first few hours of the next morning. So do they want us to change habits and charge it in the morning while we're getting ready? Maybe. I also hope that this might be a signal that Apple Watch Series 6 is getting at least a two day battery life to kind of just really support this feature. If I, if I forget to charge it one night, it's pretty much useless the next day. Now complications can use different data points from a specific app to create new watch faces that are customized to whatever you want. You can share your face. Okay, not your actual real face, but your watch face. I need to make that clear in case you're a dummy and weren't sure. You can send it to family members, share it on a web page, and users will be told which apps they need to get to complete the watch face, so that's super cool. And the best part of the presentation, the workout app tracks new activities like different styles of dancing it. It can detect if you're using your upper body or lower body more or both. So we gotta see this demo. Go get it, Jules. We also gotta see this. Ooh, please, Kevin, don't hurt him. Now, just a few smaller Apple TV updates for tvOS. We talked about picture and picture earlier. Apple TV is getting it as well, so you can watch the news or another app while doing a workout or other activity. You can even airplay a video from your phone using picture in picture. Apple TV is gonna now support multiple profiles for gaming, so different people can pick up where they left off. And then support for the Xbox Elite 2 and Xbox Adaptive Controllers. And since we started with new Macs, let's just finish up with macOS Big Sur. It's an all new design that really takes pieces of macOS and iOS and brings them together. It looks clean and bright. You gotta love Apple who is really letting us know that the dock though and the icons are brand new and look really good. Except it still looks like the same exact dock with iOS icons for the apps instead. Now there's a ton of iOS influence in here. It does look great. There's a lot of elegant transparency effects in the menus. Control Center from iOS is part of the menu bar with quick access to a lot of the settings you wanna to get to really easily. Then you have the Notification Center. This is straight out of iOS with customizable widgets. This is just a big jump visually and I cannot wait to play around with Mac OS. Big sir! All of the OS's Apple showcased are available as developer betas today. I would like to throw it out that these are beta, so please, you know, don't put them on your daily driver or your one and only device and then complain when it's buggy or has issues. This is a beta and I feel like this happens every year. A public beta will happen in July with no specific date given and then watchOS will be added to that for the very first time. Now all the software updates will be available this fall, typically when the next device is released, which tends to be around late September, October. So I wanna know what did you all think of the keynote? What was your favorite announcement? I know I didn't cover everything, so there's plenty of little things for you to bring up, and I'd love to hear them in all the comments. I thought this was one of the best Apple keynotes we've seen in a long time. I don't think there were really any outright bad apples today, but, oh, actually, I, <laughs> I know one. Uh, the iPad still does not have a calculator app. That's a bad apple! Boo! And I know you'll let me know the other ones that I miss. So yes, Apple brought some features that Android and others have had, even in Safari, you could see them kind of taking pieces from Chrome and Firefox, but look, that's just how it is for every company. Apple may have taken years, and I mean years to bring features from other platforms like widgets, but when they do it for their platform, like they just do it right. And the biggest takeaway for me overall is that Apple's ecosystem got even better, just a whole lot stronger today. And it's only this ecosystem that allows you to bring a new feature to a product that has already been released like AirPods and then allow them to switch seamlessly from all your devices just like that. And Apple Silicon is only gonna now allow them to do more things with all of their devices together with the same engine behind it. And I know there was no hardware announced and that might've made you sad. Well, you know what? Turn that frown upside down because we're gonna do 
and really get a boatload of good stuff this September and October, and I just can't wait for that. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you like this video, it's a long one, just give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my videos when they drop. Plus, you can check out my weekly podcast. It's called the Apple Bits XL. We just dive deep in depth with all the latest from Apple and more. I bring on special guests. And also, I love your support. Everything I do here is independent at patreon.com slash Tong. Thanks again, everybody. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll have more videos covering WWDC on my channel. But until then, take care and be safe and we'll talk to you soon. Peace and love. <laughs>